You guys asked for it, so we are delivering it. Here is another episode on our K-Swap Honda Civic. There was an overwhelming amount of comments in the track video that the Civic did not live up to its potential and I do apologize for that and I feel that is so, so true. This car should have gone way quicker, but because of some limiting factors, it was held back. It should have whooped up on that Type R. So in today's episode, what we are going to do is address a lot of those. First of all, uh, we are not going to do a limited slip differential. I would love to do that, but from a scope of like timing and trying to get that done, it's just not gonna happen. It's a lot of work to put a, a proper limited slip into a gearbox. It has to come apart, it has to be shimmed and, and done properly and put back together. And that is just something that's not gonna happen, but I'm confident with the other mods that we're going to do, uh, this thing will be a much better driving experience. So let's get started. So that turned out to be a lot more work than I expected. I uh, was blessed with doing the Type R and it was so easy because I forgot it wasn't engine swapped. With the engines, the way it sits in this chassis, it was really tight to get around this whole unit here. So as you guys saw, we had to like remove the, bra uh, the mounting bracket and like the engine mount, all this stuff. And eventually here it is, the rack. And the reason why we have pulled this rack, if you guys watched the previous episode, uh, this, rusted piece of pipe here failed just as i was about to go drive this thing for the first time i realized that there was a leak on here and i do want power steering um and that is because i'm just a wussy we like to have these cars oversteer and it's so much easier to catch them when they have power steering it's just a nicer easier drive the other troubling thing is if you look at the way these lines are bent like these have these very, very specific tight turns here. As you can see, um, reproducing these would be a, a bit of a nightmare. I would have to have the right like bending tools. Even this bend here is like super tight. So I think what I'm going to do is go over to the local uh, pneumatic shop and have them make some, some like stainless steel lines that are flex lines, that are braided lines, and that way it'll be easier to install, first of all, we're not gonna be running into hitting here, and there's gonna be no headache having to like bend stuff up. We can just like measure this out, get it done, and we'll be ready to rock. It is the next day, and well, <laughs> we have fixed lines, not exactly what uh, I was looking for though when we went over to the pneumatic shop. I said, hey, can you make this out of stainless steel uh, braided line. He said sure no problem and then somehow we got this set up uh, Which not ideal the only upside to this is we can crack these loose and kind of if, if we have issues putting it back in You know you can take this off. There is some play here uh, At this point, I'm like, I, I don't know why he used hardline here and then went to this rubber setup here just doesn't really make a lot of sense, but this is what we got, so this is what we're sticking with at this point. We, you know, I didn't want to tell him to redo it because, well, we're trying to get this done. As you can see, uh, I have figured out the best way to install re and re this rack is to do it from the top, just because of the the way the fitment of the gearbox is and everything. So it's uh, it's a little bit easier, not.
completely easy, but you can see I can rotate it and then get it in here and we'll uh, we'll get this installed at this point. Shouldn't be too, too difficult to get everything back into here. We are almost ready to fire this thing up and see if we have no leaks. Uh, the last thing we need to do is put the power steering belt back on. And I had a bunch of questions in the previous series about what length of belt uh, that we used here. And just for reference, it is a 7PK1715. All right guys, engine is on and let's see. Looks like we don't have any noises, which is good. That means there's not a ton of air in the system. Okay, well, I mean the other thing that we need to check here is for leaks. So far, unlike before, there's no fluid pummeling out of these lines. So I'll call this a victory, even though, like I said, I <laughs> would have never ever done it with these weird hoses in place. Uh, that, that was a huge miscommunication. So pro tip, make sure when you're gonna get a job done, that the other person knows exactly what you want. Otherwise, you may end up with something like this. Well, it's time to stiffen up the front end here. And truth be told, this is more for looks than anything, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure it'll add a little bit of front rigidity here. But I figured, you know what, why, why not put this on? Um, this is a used, I, I think it's a carbing bar. It's it could a, a knockoff of the carbing. How do you know, DP? Because I've seen the- How do you know? I, I know what brand knockoff this is. I won't say the name, but it's not a-, it's not a, uh, a Why? Why? Say the name. The, the, say the name. What brand is this? This is like, um, see how the, the corners on this are round? Yeah. The carbing corners sort of come to more of a peak. Oh, so it's okay. a different shaped tube. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so, and the, the cup shape here is also different on the carving bar. I, I only know that because I, I had a carving bar that I, okay. I paid like $600 for back in the day. Yes. But these like triangulated bars are, are very common now and relatively cheap. You can buy these for like 200 bucks probably. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. Well, um, Moose bought this for uh, I think 160 bucks Canadian. Yeah. Used. Yeah. So it is powder coated nicely. I think it's gonna, yeah. you know, look. It will stiffen up the front it's, end. For sure, sure, it certainly looks pretty mean in here, but I can tell you already the uh, fitment the, is the fitment is spec. yes, yes. So this is certainly no, hints to that knockoff spec because yeah. I can tell you this bolt here is not lining up perfectly. All right, well, fitment is uh, you know a six out of ten. We'll see how it does. But more important, like I said, I think it makes this engine bay look so much more track ready. We're moving on to what I think was one of the huge weaknesses in this car, and that was the ability to heel toe in here. Um, you can see the, the pedal spacing is quite large and making matters worse, we do have a non-boosted setup. So this pedal is very stiff, which means when I'm driving, if you're trying to come over and heel toe, you can see like you really, you really, really got to reach over to try to do that. Normally what you want to be able to do with a, sh with a foot is like that. And I can't even, you know, barely get the thing to move. So um, the plan here is, as you can see, uh, <laughs> I've got a, a set of genuine Mugen 8th uh, Gen pedal set that uh, that is definitely not genuine. Uh, even though everything says genuine on here, uh, it is not. So these, this is a, a knockoff setup. I don't even know where I got this, somewhere sitting in the stash. Um, we're gonna put these on here, which I think, as you can see, they're just gonna give me the just a little bit of extra space where I can move my foot over here. And then with this, this is usually for a drive-by wire pedal, so it would rotate here. Uh, however, I'm gonna cut this probably around here, and then we can mount it up as such like that. And I I think, I think this will be the way to go. And our Fugen pedal set is installed. And truthfully, I think it's gonna work pretty well. You can see the space between the, the, the brake pedal and the gas pedal is so, so much better now. So I can just like, look at that. Heel toe pretty easily. I think once we rip the track, it'll be so much easier to do. Which is a good thing um, because we are trying to head to the track ASAP. And of course we went into the stash, pulled out another Recaro SPG here. It's just perfection in these cars. And same with the Buddy Club super low down seat rails. These are just so, so good, man. I, every time I install them, I'm always thanking myself I got them because it's such a plug and play solution. You're not like bolting 
uh, sliders onto rails and all this stuff. So it's it's really, really nice. And let's see here, man. This feels nice, DP. Oh yeah, the heel toe is gonna be good. I'm liking this, although I don't necessarily love the steering wheel. So in the stash, I went and pulled out this Mod 7 deep dish steering wheel. This is usually reserved for the drifters, but uh, you know what? I think it's gonna work well in here. You can see, just moves the steering position a little bit closer, which is nice. And that is it, four point OMP harness is in and we are officially done. Not a ton to make this car, I think, such a better vehicle. And I'm super curious, you know, at first I was really interested in doing that limited slip differential, but now we get to see if driver mods like a steering wheel, you know, the pedal spacing and the seat and the harness will make a huge difference versus putting in something like that LSD. So this is gonna be a, uh, certainly a good test, but this thing is, I think, right now ready to rip. Now that the EK is finally ready, we do have a couple of things planned for the Type R just to sexy it up a bit. And as a matter of fact, one of the upgrades we had planned, we wanted to reveal to you during that Valvoline sponsored series where we prepped the car and took it to grid life. And that was to take this 16 inch JDM Type R wheel, but downsize it to a 15 for better tire choice because you can't get good performance tires in 16s these days. So as much as I love the look of the 16s, and these may be used as a street tire, we went to Augment Wheel Company, who we've used before for custom wheels, and said, can you make us something that looks like these, but in a 15 by seven plus 35 offset, so that we have the fender clearance that we want, we can take the camera out of the rear, we'll get rid of that understeer that we have, and we'll have a super sexy, very unique wheel. And he said, of course I can do that. As a matter of fact, why don't I make them out of magnesium? As you can see right here, it says magnesium on the wheel. And I can tell you from holding this thing, it is insanely light. I just weighed it, it weighs 10.4 pounds on our little foot shook scale, which seems to coincide with Dan's math on the weight. So a very, very lightweight wheel in a, I think, you know, a classic JDM style. In any case, this was going to let us, you know, run the wheel and tire package we wanted with the fender clearance we wanted, but FedEx lost one of the wheels. So we are not gonna be able to mount these up. So we're just gonna keep running the rays for now. Well, we thought we'd throw these on here really quickly and show you what they look like on the car. I know it's always weird to see a wheel on a car without a tire on it, but it still gives you an idea of the style on this car. And I really do like them a lot. I think they're, they're really nice. And most importantly, the offset is just perfect. It's like a classic flush fitment, giving me those 90s vibes. And like we said before, it's just gonna let me set up the alignment the way this car needs to be set up without having to roll the fenders. So. Thank you very much, Augment Wheels. These things are really, really cool. When you work with a custom wheel manufacturer, they can do whatever you want. So uh, Dana was kind enough to make these Speed Academy center caps for us. One other thought that just occurred to us is if that final wheel doesn't show up and we end up making like an insurance claim or something, that gives us the opportunity to maybe change the color to championship white. We didn't think of ordering them in championship white at the time, but now that we may have the opportunity to reorder them, Maybe we go to championship white so we get that that matched look like the OE wheels have. So uh, for all you guys that are triggered by a stark white wheel on a championship white car, we may have a solution for you there in the future. One thing I want to do to the Type R is try to dial out some of the understeer that we were experiencing both at Lime Rock and at TMP when we did our original track battle. So to do that, I am going to change the setting on this rear hard race sway bar from the softer setting to the stif stiffer setting just two spots here. So we'll go full stiff on the rear bar here as a starting point to try to dial out some of that understeer. <laughs> a quick job we want to do up front here is actually replace the rear engine mount. Cause we noticed the engine had a lot of forward and backward rock 
when we were like, you know, revving it in uh, while it's parked. And uh, sure enough, you can see that this mount is torn quite badly right here. It's almost torn all the way through here and you can see it's starting to tear on the other side right there. So this was certainly past its uh, due date and just so happens, I have these hard race mounts, PT. Do you remember these mounts? Wait a second. I, I thought you sold them, DP. Well, you know, I took them out of my budget because I didn't install them, but I didn't actually sell oh. them because that'd be crazy. Oh. Oh. I mean, you've got a shop full of hoarded parts. I just put them into the hoard, and since they didn't go in the car, so there was technically no... you would have been over budget. Uh, well, not you this. Wouldn't I think have taken we, that. I think we said these were only like forty off. or fifty dollars. I oh. might have still been okay oh. with this yeah, one. But yeah. okay. In any case, I forward planned and and held on to these mounts. So. We can throw this guy in here, and this is, is, of course, a hardened rubber mount, so not only is it going to be, you know, not ripped, it's also going to have less play in it than the factory mount, so double win, and uh, nothing coming out of my budget this time, PT, because I got no budget. Well, that wraps up our very limited prep on the Integra Type Par. I was hoping that that Special Projects front lip and splitter kit would have shown up by now, but unfortunately, it is not here yet. I did speak to Jeff there briefly, and it should be here soon, but... Uh, in any case, we'll have more content for you on the tape bar in the near future with those wheels and this front lip and splitter. And uh, I guess we're gonna have to put a fully built B20 in there, PT, like 240 wheel. What do you think? Is that the only way I'm gonna keep up with that K-Swap Civic? Is that how I'm gonna have to do it? Last but not least, a lot of you have been asking, what is this massive fan in your shop that we, you guys have seen in certain shots? And this is a cool boss. This is essentially a swamp cooler, an evaporative air cooler. And it's got a big fan here, and on the back side here, it has this paper mesh, cardboard, I think, and water runs down this, and then the fan sucks air through and cools the air, and you get a nice, refreshing breeze through it. This is actually really awesome for low humidity uh, climates, what, like Arizona, uh, California, where the air is like super, super dry and makes this really, really nice. Here, we, we do find it's a tad, it raises the humidity, so it's already humid in the summers. It does raise the humidity a little bit, but the coolness um, is certainly a, a welcome addition to the shop. And it can also double as a fan here. So you can see it's, it's fully like controllable. It has speakers built into it. It's got an LED light. like. It's a, a really awesome unit, and um, the fan goes very, very high. Hold on here, people. This thing's gonna go uh, That already feels good. Let's show them my hair blowing the fan here. Oh, well, you know, if you had hair, I think we could do that. All right, guys, that is going to be a wrap on this video. Thank you so much for watching. The next one, we are headed back to the racetrack where I'm pretty confident Dave and I are gonna both run quicker lap times. Now, the question is, is the Civic gonna beat the Integra or is the Integra gonna beat the Civic? But I already think I know the answer to that. Integra, Integra, he's mouthing Integra, everybody.